Hello, my wonderful pen friends. Welcome back to another pen review video. And this is a pen I have been sitting on for a long time. It's a pen I picked up quite a while ago. And it's this is one that I bought outright um, from a pen show. It's a very special pen. I'll set the stage right now. So in case you're not interested, you can skip the video. It's a pen that is very rare and not very easy to find and very expensive. So if that's not your cup of tea, you're certainly welcome to to uh, head elsewhere and look at another review, but that's what we're gonna be diving into today. So if you're fairly new to the fountain pen hobby, chances are you're probably not super familiar with the Italian pen brand, Tibaldi. Tibaldi was around uh, one from the early, I think 1916, somewhere right around there, and was in production in Italy through the mid 1960s. Kind of went out, went out of business, and it was resurrected back in the 90s. And from the late 90s until 2001, they produced some very beautiful, very high-end limited edition pens. They reminded, they're a lot like Omas in that respect, I feel like. Um, just, you know, it was an Italian brand. They had some beautiful materials that nobody else had. And, uh, and their pens were quite expensive and generally pretty well regarded. They went out of business again in 2001, and the, later on, the, the company was resurrected again. It is owned by another company now, and I think I've got the, um, I don't have the name of the company who owns it right now, but, um, <clears throat> but they make extremely high-end pens, and they're not very well-known or very, uh, very well communicated out through the fountain pen community. The pen in question today is probably one of the most famous Tibaldi's ever manufactured. It was part of that middle period from the late 90s through 2001, and it is made of a material that kind of put Tibaldi on the map. It's a material that people still go out of their way to try to find, and anyone who finds a rod or two of this celluloid is uh, basically they, they have won the jackpot. And the pen in question is the Tibaldi Impero. This is the Tibaldi Impero, and I'm going to go through the design a little bit more. But before I do that, let me show you what is kind of neat about this. So the pen comes in this big, giant, honking pen case. Uh, it's a, it looks like maple. I can't, I'm not good with identifying one, but it looks like a maple. Um, slides out, and it comes in this kind of satin-lined case. But interestingly enough, underneath the satin-lined case, you pull that out, and you've got a, uh, what is it, eight pen, seven pen, one, two, three two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven pen, uh, pen drawer as well. There was also a spot in the satin lining here for a bottle of Tibaldi ink. I think I have the ink around here somewhere, but I couldn't find it for the, the video review. So, um, I may or may not have that. It's not very common to find them in these cases because the cases are really big and people would often let them go. And then the knob here has got the little Tibaldi signal or uh, symbol on it right there. Um, so it also comes with, where's the, uh, this, this little booklet here, and the booklet is in English. Um, it's shaped kind of like the cap of the pen, and uh, oh, I've got a little bit of tape on this here. Let me open it up, but uh, it's got instructions in both uh, Italian and in English, and uh, all of that fun stuff. It is pretty uncommon to find uh, one of these pens with its material here, and uh, you know, nice little little document. But uh, and then down here it says E40, and I'll talk about that in just a second as well. So what makes this pen special is the material from which it is built. This is the Tibaldi Impero celluloid. And you have likely, if you've been around, you've probably heard this. And what makes this so interesting? This is, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful materials. You know, it's kind of your standard silver, black, gray, flake material. But in between is, are these veins of just absolutely iridescent electric blue. Um, there's really nothing quite like it that I've ever seen. Uh, I've seen people try to imitate it and no one has, I've seen people get close, but no one has really gotten there yet. It is a gorgeous material. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, it's a material that people still look for. If you can find a, a, a rod stock of Tibaldi Impero celluloid, 
they, the rod stocks go for several hundred dollars. Um, people will get pens made with just a little tiny piece of Tobaldi Impero on it. And it's getting increasingly hard to find because they stopped making these around 2000 or so. And so since then, no one's really been able to duplicate the celluloid from this, uh, this lovely Impero material. So the pen is kind of your standard 12-sided style pen here. And uh, it's very similar in a lot of ways to Omas, some of Omas's models like the Paragon. Got a slight point at the top here. Uh, you've got this very springy clip. Then it comes down, you've got a triple cap band that matches, you know, it's got the same corners as the pen itself. The barrel of the pen is also faceted and the facet, facets line up pretty closely with the cap. Here it says, and I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, it says Tibaldi. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, let's see if I can find it here. Where did it go? Oh, I'll show you where it is. It's a little bit later on. And then uh, come down here and you've got another end point. This is a piston filler and this, the piston knob is down here, but it, it blends almost seamlessly in with the barrel of the pen. Uh, underneath the cap, you have this little E40, and again, that'll be very hard to see. I'll see if I can't cut in a photo of it. Um, the, this was a numbered set, and no one really knows exactly how many of these were made, because these were made right toward the end of the time that Tobaldi was in existence. So um, they came out with E um, E and I. The E means that it came with English literature. The I may, means it came with Italian literature. And um, there were, oh, sorry. I'm just looking at my notes here. It said there were supposed to be about 500 of them made, but only about half were delivered before the company went out of business. Uh, when the company went out of business, the pieces were bought and assembled and sold, but they weren't sold as official to Baldi Pens. So there are some out here, some out there that are very similar to this, but are either not numbered or numbered after the company went out. They don't have Tobaldi branded nibs or the word Tobaldi isn't, isn't etched into the barrel of the pen. So there's no way of knowing exactly how many of these are out there, but the ones that, the ones that are complete and true and were released under Tobaldi's time, you know, it could be half of the 500, it could be a little more, it could be a little less, but there are a bunch of Franken pen versions of this that are out there that were released after the company went out of business. Um, as number 40, this was a pretty early one, I suspect, and was likely produced when the company was still in business, toward the end of its time still in business. Under the cap, you've got the threads right here in the middle of the, the grip area, and then the section down here. The section is made of that same lovely celluloid material, and it even still has that lovely camphor-like smell inside the cap that, uh, that true celluloids do. Cellulo cellulose nitrates, I believe, is what they're called. And uh, then you've got a nib here. It's an 18-karat gold nib, and it just very simple says to Baldi Extra got a feed. The nibs and the feed make me believe that these nibs were built by Bach. They look to be a Bach nib and feed shape. And, uh, and there you go. It's a lovely, lovely pen. So those of you who have watched my videos for a long time know that I like Italian pens. This one is no exception. It's, it's a combination of beautiful craftsmanship, a really classical shape combined with just an absolutely stunning eye-catching, gorgeous material. Uh, I love this material. It is easily up there in the top three or four materials of any pen ever made. Um, this, this celluloid ranks up there for me with the um, diffusion bonded acrylic that my classic pens come in and the uh, Omas Brown Arco celluloid. So I really, really love this material. So that is the pen. It can be capped. I'm not going to cap it really hard. It, it does get pretty long when capped, and so I don't ever feel the need to cap it. It's quite comfortable in the hand. It's pretty light, being a celluloid pen, and the mechanics inside the pen are a plastic. They are not metal, so you don't have that extra heft that comes from a metal piston filler. Uh, it's really 
I mean, there's just not a lot to say. It's a gorgeous pen and, uh, and it's a gorgeous writer too. So how about I do some measurements and some comparisons and then we get into the writing. So before I talk too much about the writing experience of this pen, I should probably clarify that this pen was worked on by the nib smith Mike Masayama at, want to say the 2016 Washington DC show. Can't remember which show it was that he worked on it, but it was, it was one of those shows. Um, the, the pen wrote okay. It was a little scratchy. Um, but I wanted to really get it to, to sing for me. So this is not what it was like when it came out of the box, but this pen is no longer in production. So out of the box is not really an experience you can expect to have most of the time anyway. So I'll call out the way it writes now with the understanding that it was worked on by, uh, by Masayama-san. So let's, uh, let's keep that in mind as we talk through it. And per perhaps unsurprisingly, because of Mike's wonderful work on this pen, it is a superb writer. It is very wet, um, which is exactly what I asked for. Just a wonderful, wet, juicy, kind of broadish medium nib. It is a medium technically, but it is a little on the broad side. Very smooth, um, just a touch, just a whisper of feedback especially going at an angle like this, I still occasionally will get just a little hint of a, it's not a skip, but if it is a little sensitive to the writing angle, if I'm going at a horizontal or a diagonal stroke like that, just a really lovely writing experience though. Um, there's a touch of bounce to the nib, but not enough to 
um, justify ever trying to get line variation out of it. And I don't do that with 18 karat gold nibs anymore, as I have often said. In terms of reverse writing, it's really quite a good reverse writer, like an extra fine here. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't really know what to say other than this is a really fun pen to write with. It's, it's a medium nib. It's nothing special. It's no cursive italic. It's no double broad, triple broad paintbrush kind of thing. It's just a medium nib, but it is one of the most glorious medium nibs in my collection. And I've got a bunch of really nice medium nibs in my collection because that's what I like. Um, with a pen like this, one of the reasons, well, first of all, I don't care for flat nibs and I never have, um, like the, the cursive italics or stubs. That's just not my style. But because this pen is out of production, is very rare and extremely expensive, this is not a nib I wanted to have ground down because I couldn't replace the nib it would be very difficult for me to replace the nib with another Tabaldi branded nib that is age appropriate to this pen. I could have replaced it with another number six nib, another Bach number six nib if I wanted to, but I, I chose to have it only adjusted, not ground. Now, I know there are a lot of folks out there who would probably, who are probably about ready to throttle me in my sleep because I inked it and use it. Uh, Pens like this are often considered very rare collectibles and are not used. This one is one, I didn't buy it because I wanted to collect it and put it away as an investment. I bought it because I love the pen. I love the material and I wanted to use it as a, a pen that I could write letters and write in my journal with. So this is one I don't leave the house with very often. Um, I will often bring it to pen shows and things like that because I know pen people really like to see these Tabaldi, see this Tabaldi material. And very, I've seen a lot of pens made of Tabaldi celluloid. This is the only true Tabaldi Impero I've seen in person. They are not very common pens. So here is where we get to the price. And I'm going to tell you how much I paid for it. I suspect I probably overpaid a little bit, but I don't know for sure. Uh, this I bought this pen for $1,200. $1,200? Is that correct? Yes, I think I got it for $1,200. Uh, it was uninked. It was with its original packaging, including the bottle of ink, including the case, uh, including the, the, the pamphlet here. So it is a... It is a, it was a collector's pen, a collector's pen that I paid for and then used as a, a writer's pen. So I am certain I have devalued this pen by using it. I don't care because I don't ever plan on selling it. This is one that I expect to stay in my collection for as long as I have a collection. Uh, this is one I don't suspect I will ever, ever sell or get, get rid of. So um, is that a lot of money for a pen? Yes, absolutely no denying it. Uh, it is, it's a very rare pen, especially to get one with its original packaging, with the case, with this, in as good of shape as this one is in. Um, I have seen them go for less. I have seen them go for more. I've, uh, but that's only online. I've never seen them in person other than this one. So um, I've had it for quite a while. I've been using it for quite a while. It's one I love to turn to. Um, yeah, great, great pen. Well, that, my dear pen friends, is going to do it for this kind of review slash overview of the Tabaldi Impero, the perhaps the most famously out of production, famous out of production pen of the moment. And uh, if you happen to come across a rod stock of Tabaldi Impero celluloid and you have the opportunity to buy it, I would highly encourage you to do so because the pens aren't are rarely available and the rod stock is becoming increasingly rarely available. So if you can get a, a rod of that material and have a custom pen made out of it, you're going to be a happy camper, I suspect. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them on the comment section of YouTube or over in the comment section on penhabit.com. And don't forget to head over to penhabit.com for additional photos and to see the written review as well as check out the Inky Fingers notebook collection. Thank you so much for joining me. And we will see you here soon for another Fountain Pen Review. Bye.